crafters thank you for joining me in my live studio today the sunshine is out so thank you for taking the time to stop by and get maybe a little bit of inspiration for your card making or crafty projects for those of you who don't know who i am my name is tony Derrick, and i'm a guest presenter over on create and craft tv and i love anything to do with ink stencils dye stamps anything crafty anything that takes your mind off day-to-day -day life and I know that's why you guys tune in, so you can do the same. If you are watching on YouTube, absolutely brilliant. Don't forget to click the subscribe button. And if you are on Facebook, pop a comment below when I pop the pictures on to let me know if you've enjoyed the studio, did you pick up anything new, or is it a technique that you've been doing for a while and found um, pros and cons with things that we do. So it's always good to hear from you. We have our Eureka fan page, which is awesome. On there you get so much inspiration from other crafty friends um, I will call them the Eureka family and the design team who are also there to support you in anything you need so have a have a look on there and see if there's something you actually like in today's studio we're back to Christmas I know that a lot of you have had your Christmas delivery or may have got your Christmas delivery today I've seen some of the fabulous makes there's been some beautiful tags a lady's done some tags with some of the pine cones on looks absolutely stunning some of you have done the marvelous background stamp I am watching I might not always have the time to comment but I am watching and some of them are amazing so keep up the work we love to see your makes here at stamps by me it encourages me to do more as I encourage you to pick up your stash and have a play if you don't have the products in studio please don't worry about it you can use anything you've got at home you might have something similar or the technique that you pick up you can use alongside another product it really doesn't matter it's about using the products sharing the inspiration so whatever you've got you can use so put your feet up grab a cup of tea and spend half an hour plus with me now to do some tutorials we are going to go to Christmas and the ones that we're going to use are these ones. So in our first demonstration, I'm going to be using these ones. So we have the star, we have the bird baubles and we have the pine cone. Now I have done a video already for the star doing a 3D project. So if you missed that show, I encourage you to go back and see that one. It's a marvellous um, project and I know a lot of you are trying it already and it looks fabulous if you want to give somebody a gift that's got a wow factor the 3d element of this one and the snowflake is absolutely stunning so these are the three for the first demo and these are the two for the second demo so we're going to be using some sentiments out of here some of the foliage and i'm going to show you how to make some shaped cards using your lovely snowflake sorry your star so let's set this aside then and let's move on to our first demo so first off, we're going to be cutting the lovely star outline. Just before I do that though, for those of you who haven't seen the 3D project, it's this one. So it's the one with the lovely star on the tag. Go back and watch the video. It's truly, truly fabulous and you will have so much fun making it, I'm sure. So we're going to use the lovely star today and what we're going to do is we are going to create a star shaped card. So we're not going to use the decorative element of the star today, we're just going to use the outlines and we're going to create some shaped cards which is fun and it's a little bit different and it goes down to what I always say about having something different on your mantelpiece that's going to stand out from the rest of your Christmas cards. So here I have a top folding note card and I'm just going to pop it on my um, embossing plates. Now I'm using the cut and boss but these, these dies work with all of your die cutting machines. They do go through a snap as well, so if you have got a snap machine, you're safe to know that will go through. So to create a shaped card with your outline die, you need to pop this, the die over the hinge, I'll just show you again, over the hinge of this card, and this will create a shaped card. So I'll just show you, when I say pop it over the edge, I literally mean just so it's creeping over the edge, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, just so it's just tipping over the edge so you still get to keep the shape of it but you get to get the element of a star within a shape so I'm just going to hold that down there and I'm just going to grab another piece just make sure it doesn't move in my machine like so so I'm going to run this one through 
and this is where we'll get our shaped card. Now you can do this with the snowflake. You can do this with the snowflake and you can do it with most of our paper piecing dies. Just always leave the tip of the die element hang over the score line of your card and you'll get an instant shaped card and I'll show you that just now. So something a little bit different again, but it's it's you know it's just an alternative way to use your dies. We don't have to use them as it says on the box. So as you can see there, it's cut through beautifully. So all you do is just remove the low tack tape if without tearing if you can. And then you have a star-shaped card. Can you see? Because it was over the hinge of that um, card blank. So I've got a star-shaped card which will stand up on a mantelpiece and look amazing. So I'll just set that one aside. So the next one in the set is obviously slightly smaller. So what I'm going to do this time, I'll just swap that outside one. I've just got a piece of white card here and I'm just going to create myself a mat and layer. So I'm just going to run this one through. Same um, coloured card, same as white, same as the card blank. And what we're going to do today is we're going to do two star-shaped cards, one using papers one using ink. So the technique that we're going to use with the ink, if you have maybe some silhouette stamps, your reindeer stamps flying through the sky, some tree silhouettes, how we did those last year, a lot of you have got those, that would lend itself really well to this sort of look for a Christmas card. So here I have just a piece of scrap card, I'm just going to pop my element on there, just move this out of the way. And I have two coloured distress inks here. I have chipped sapphire and seedless preserve. So they're the two colours you need if you're going to try and re recreate this card. So when you look at your card, I can't really show here, this is the way my card is going to be like this. So I know that when I'm colouring this second element, I need to bear in mind where I'm going to go with my colours. So I'll just set this into the centre. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, some blue at the top and some purple down at the bottom. So I'm just going to go in and add some lovely colour on there. Now I have done one ahead of time and I've spent ages getting it as dark as I possibly could before I came to air. So this is just for reference for you if you are wanting to follow along. But if you have got the time, try and get lots of colour on there and it creates a lovely mystical, um, like an evening sky, it's lovely. So I'm just going to go in with the one colour on the top half, get lots of colour on there. Make it as dark as possible. Like so, and then I'm just going to twist my work around. and I'm going to swap out for the other colour. And we'll just get the two colours to uh, meet in the middle. Very therapeutic, this ink blending. So I would spend way more time trying to get it darker and blend it more together, but you can get the idea there that we're getting like a mystical feeling with the two tones in there. I would blend it a little bit better in the centre, but just for reference, I have got one ahead of time, but just for reference, I am... Um, 
just getting on with it because I have got two demos to get through. So for this one then, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to swap them two out and swap it in for a green and we're going to create some perspective, so background and foreground. And the way that we're going to do that is I'm just going to use an acrylic block for this one and I'm going to be using this collection. So the two elements I'm going to be using are this one here and this one here. This is a fabulous technique if you didn't buy the dies. I know a lot of you use your brother and scan and cut, but if you just managed to buy the stamp or that's all you could afford, then this is a fabulous technique that you can use all the time if you don't have the dies. So let's grab the stamp. So I'm gonna use the fern one first before I use the branch. And we're just going to use the green on this one. So I'm just inking up the green straight onto here. And I'm just going to create a little bit of perspective on here. So I'm just going to move it over. So this is going to be in the background, should we say. So don't forget to twist the um, stamp. And it'll just make it look a little bit more realistic. Like so. I'm just going to do it down one side. So with the net, this one, I'm still going to use it, but I'm going to put some black in there to create a, like a shadow. So that's background. My black's going to be foreground. But I'm not going to put a lot of black on there, I just want it to creep over the edge. And you can do second generation stamping as well, so you get a bit of a lighter feel. So, I mean, it is a piece of card and I would always say this, uh, but I do encourage you to just have a go. If it doesn't work out, you know it's not the end of the world. So you can see there now, You've got instant perspective. Looks fabulous. So I'm just going to clean that stamp off. And we'll set this one aside. And then we're going to use our pretty branch. Now you could use the one of two that you could use. You could also use this one. So for this one, I, let's because my other one's been made with that one, let's try it with this one. So this is going to be like the black, like a black branch. So I'm going to ink it up. And I'm going to do it across the centre here. So I've got like a branch coming across there. Now you're wondering why you're doing a branch. Well, you know the baubles that we've got, or most of us have already got them. Um, we have the fabulous, just set that aside, we have the fabulous bo um, bird collection, don't we? So we have this one. So this one here is the one that I'm going to use. I've already got it out and I'm just going to cut in, in some black card. Now, I was debating whether to do it in black or gold and I have done it in black, but I do think it'll look fabulous in gold as well. So if you are going to try this technique, Try it in a metallic colour or a gold or glitter even. It probably will look just as good. I'm just going to run this one through. So let's just let's just pop it on there so you can see where we're going with it because it's a bit messy. I'll just pop this one out and you can see you get the lovely bauble anyway with the bird inside so uh, if you do like anything I'm using in studio today you can just go on to Facebook live everything I'm using is on there um, it saves you having to hunt around but I appreciate probably most of you have got the products anyway 
uh, and if you haven't got the products and budget's not allowed you to get the products please don't worry about it baubles have been in dye form for a long time now so you will have something in your stash that will work so with this bird here what i'm going to do can you see there i've just hold it above there so you can see look what i'm going to do is i'm going to snip it out but i'm not just going to snip the bird out i'm going to take some of the black as well so it'll tie in nicely with our lovely image here so let's snip out this lovely branch here and snip out this leaf let's snip it there to make that round to a leaf and we'll take that one off there and then on the bottom here we'll just snip that little piece away there you see there we've got like a bird on a branch there so you just need to cut him out and you can do that with all of the bird collection so before we go ahead and do anything else what we need to do is we need to bring, bring this bird to life because he's looking a little bit lost so what we're going to do is i have a white gel pen which i'm just going to grab and we're just going to pop a little highlight on there now you can pop a little highlight on with a white pencil a little bit of white paint whatever you have in your stash I'm just going to highlight his tummy a little bit, pop a little highlight on and then maybe a little bit round his eye and then just going to pop a little line in the leaves. Now that looks like a square leaf and it just doesn't happen so I'm just going to round that one off. There we go. So I'll pop that where the li embossed lines are in his tail, I'll pop those in too. And then all of a sudden your work comes to life. So you can see already how he's going to pop off there when we come to put him together. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to just set him aside. So from the one of the collections, which is... I think we'll go with this one remember what I was saying about the smaller sentiments how useful they are it's all good and well doing the big ones and the fabulous for our bigger cards sometimes we just need a little delicate one just to fill in a little space so I am going to use one of the little delicate ones so you can all see that now how it's just got a bit of colored background and a little bit of a creeper on there now ahead of time I did do this one and I popped some stickles all the way around to give it the sparkly finish and this is the branch I was talking about now looking back doing this one I like this branch on this one better than I do this one but again it's down to preference they're all in the same stamp set so you could create so many different variations of a card with the same concept so just bear that in mind so I'm just going to set that aside and I'm just going to go with now which way am I going to have my card I think we're going to have to go this way so I'm just going to check that before we move on so I have my top folding star card. When we come to pop it on the white, look what happens. It looks fabulous. So you just need to bear in mind which way you're going to have this. So are we going to have the branch creeping up? I think we'll go this way. It's just food for thought because I'm going to pop a sentiment on there. I'm just going to pop it here, you see. So I'm just going to grab my Eureka so I don't ruin it at the last minute. I'll just hold it in place in my Eureka and then we'll grab the small sentiment. Oh, it just fits perfectly. So I'm going to go with Make-A-Wish. So they are super small, so when you come to stamp down, don't squidge because the stamp will just squidge together and it won't be readable. You don't need to like give it a good old push, it will just naturally stamp. So I'm going to do this one in black. see there let's just do it one more time just a gentle push so it doesn't all squidge together there we have looks lovely I'll just clean that off because it's that small it will probably get lost
So let's get this stuck onto our card. So I'm just going to use some book binding glue. Now this would look fabulous padded as well, so don't be afraid to use your pads. Just get rid of the clog in that glue. So if you haven't got any of the products we're using in show, all you need to do when you're looking through your stash is looking for something that's symmetrical and is an outlined eye. That would work over the edge of a card and that would give you a shaped card. Just trying not to burn, get mucky paws. And then the bird that we've already gone ahead and stuck is going to sit. We're going to connect the black element of here onto here so it looks like it's connected in some fashion, like so. So I'm just going to stick him flat. But again, you can 3D if you want to. Give it a second to grab. And then just to finish, I would just grab a gel pen and I would just pop some little white dots in and around to create the appearance of maybe snow or splatters. And I would probably pop a little highlight on top of this branch. See there how it stands out. I won't go all the way down the page, but I will just certainly go in and just drop some of these in random so it looks like we've done some splatters. So that is card number one. It's very, very simple. It's just using the two outline dies. And when you stand it up, like so, you have a instant a card. So it looks absolutely fabulous. See there? But you don't have to use pink, purples and blues. You can use whatever colours you want to use. It's down to preference, really. So you could batch make these, do them in variations of colours and just have fun, just as I have today making it. So let's move on to demonstration number two. So I'll just set this one aside. And let's move on to number two. So same concept. And ahead of time, what I did was I cut my star and then the second one, which we did with the colour part, this one, I cut it out of the pattern paper, can we see? And then I just gave it a glittery edge. Like so. So let's move on to the colouring element of this. So for this one, I decided to use this one here. So this is from the Christmas florals. It says Christmas, it isn't Christmas. You can use it all year round. So that's what we're gonna use now. So just set things aside. Let's um, just tidy my station. So last studio Monday, we launched our pencil range uh, from the Himmy collection. Uh, you should have them, maybe. Let me know what you think. You're probably going to get them home and go, oh my goodness, they are huge. They are a big box. And I have mine here, and that's what we're going to use in studio. So uh, because you've purchased them, I will try and use them as much as I can in studio so you can get an idea of how to use them, how to get the most out of them. You know, when you pay for good kit, in my opinion, you should be products that you're going to put hands on all the time. So... Thank you. So we are going to use the flower one. So I'm just going to grab it right here. I'm just going to use my block here, just for speed. And we're just going to stamp this one out and we're going to show you how lovely it stamps. So because
because the card and the paper is quite delicate looking, if you stamp your image in a black, it's going to be like, what am I looking at? Am I looking at the pretty paper or am I looking at your big black image? So I find um, it's a little bit easier on the eye if you stamp it in a grey or like a really pale, like sepia colour. So it's just food for thought for you. So I'm just going to stamp this one out. Hopefully it'll stamp. There we go. You can see how lovely that is. And then, with our fabulous pencils, I'm just going to show you what I did. So, in studio, I did encourage everybody to do a colour swatch. If you remember, if you missed the video, please go back and watch it. I, don't, I hate to have to repeat myself, but I do appreciate every time we do studio, we do have new crafters, but I do also appreciate that people watch every time and never miss a, miss a show. show. So I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm repeating myself all the time, but I just like to cater for everybody. So, work my card the right way. And what I did was, from our pencil collection, which is this one, we did our colour swatch, didn't we? I grabbed my card and I went through the colours to see what matched. And I could see this was pretty much a match to this one. And I could see the olive greens, sage greens, were perfect for this one here. So I decided to make everything match. So I used these colours and this one. So if you have purchased the pencils, it might be a good idea to number them across the top and then number your swatch. And then you've got a point of reference should you want to do the colour matching like I've done today. To be honest with you, because they're quite an expensive pit, bit of kit and you know we like, like to look after these things I make sure I put everything back I look after it so I know exactly where all of these pencils are so when I come to use them every single time it's going to be right so I'm just going to set this aside and I'm going to get the two colours and what I'm going to do is I coloured one flower in the orangey beigey colour which coordinated with this one and then I coloured another flower in the greeny colour here. So I'm going to show you how fabulous they looked and how I got them to match. So I'm just going to pull them in close together so I could um, try and get them to match. I mean I'm never going to get them to match perfectly but I will have a good go with the colours I have in my stash. So all I did was I dropped a bit of colour on the shaded lines here now this is normal cardstock, but because the pencils are so good, I will still get the blend. However, I do say if you are buying expensive products, don't cheat on yourself. Get the good stuff and enjoy every minute of it. Because sometimes it's just the product or the card that does let you down. You, you know, you spent hundreds of pounds on pens and things, and then it's the card that you're working on, it lets you down. So if you are spending money on products, make sure you get the right kit. So I have a wet brush here, I could do with a smaller one actually for the detail. So, it's not very wet isn't my brush. And I'm just going to drag this orange right to the end, so I get coverage. So I'm getting the full coverage as this flower here as you can see. And then on the outer part of this flower here, it's a little bit darker. So all I did was I stepped up to the next pencil in there. And what I did was I dropped a little bit of colour in the outer pen, outer leaves, outer petals, sorry. Not much, just dropped a little bit in. Because I don't want this flower to take over the beautiful card. Like so, and the centre of that one is a yellowy green. So I'm just going to grab the yellow and the sage green we spoke about, and I'm just going to do yellow down one side and a little bit of green down the other. Not a lot, just a little bit. I'm just going to drag it out with a little bit of water. So one side green, one side yellow. So I've done that twice and they are here somewhere. And I 
cut them out and we ended up with something like this, which is pale, paler than that one, like this. And then the greeny one, you can't really see on camera there, but I didn't want to dis dis distract from the paper, so they're quite pale. So let's go ahead and construct this card. So this wouldn't even have to be a Christmas card if you didn't want it to be. So I need a lovely sentiment on here. And again, I went back to this, um, this one here and I found that this Merry Christmas one here fit perfectly here. So let's go ahead and do that one. Now again, because we used grey, if I stamp this in black, it probably wouldn't look great. It would look okay, but you know, it's distracting, isn't it? So let's just make sure I've picked the right sentiment there. Yeah. So let's get our Eureka again. So I did glitter the edge of this one as well. I'm not sure if you can see that. And that's just using the stickles. But if you are using your stickles, if you haven't got patience, you maybe need to do it and then go to bed. Because if you haven't got patience, you'll be touching it to see if it's dry and then smudging it because it does take quite a while. So, so I'm going to go for Merry Christmas along this side and I am going to heat emboss it. So, because I am heat embossing, I'm just using my anti static bag. Sticky ink pad, and we'll go with a coppery tone. Oh, maybe silver, seeing as we've stamped in grey. Let's just see if I have got silver with me. I have. Let's go with silver keep within the theme. So sticky ink pad, these are available on the website, but use whatever sticky ink pad you've got in your stash. Just go for it one more time. Even just this shape of card with the heat emboss sentiment in the centre, a biggish one, that would be enough for a, a standout Christmas card there. You can see that there. So I'm just going to heat set this one with my gun. Just get my gun as hot as possible and then it'll stop my card from getting lumps and bumps. Thank you. So as soon as the gun's hot, I pop it on and the powder instantly changes. See if you can see that. There we go. So really, really good looking card. And then our two elements, we're just gonna make sure my card's the right way. I'm just gonna creep up this side. Let's maybe go with that one. No. Nope. I am going to pop a pad behind and I'll double pad this one so it's raised higher than that one
if I can get the back off. And I'm just going to trim that tail off because it's just hanging. It serves no purpose, so I'm going to take it off. There we go. So before I um, finish that off, I'm just going to... I've got the, the stickles that I'm using, uh, ladies and gents, is the diamond stickles. It's got a green undertone, which is fabulous because it shows up all the colours underneath. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of the stickles into the petals on there. So it all sparkles together. Like so. And then just to finish, I am just going to pop some of these tiny, tiny gems around. And I mean, they are like very small, two mil and one mil. But just to finish, oh, there's some stars on there too. There you have, I'll just move all my stuff out of the way, <laughs> two same dies, I'll just move these to the side, there we go, two completely different looks, so it's down to you as a crafter, do you like your papers, do you like your ink, do you like both, have a go with both, me personally I love ink, I love paper, pretty papers, I love anything that's using these, so I hope you've liked today's studio, if you did manage to get the um, snowflake die or the star die, you know this technique is awesome for that so i do encourage you to get them out and have a good old play with them i hope you've enjoyed today's studio don't forget to drop me a comment let me know your thoughts which is your best card which one will you try i am back in studio on i'm not on this monday i confused you slightly last week i told you it was this monday but obviously we had studio this monday i'm not in studio so i'll be back with you on wednesday for the live studio on youtube however tomorrow at, four, at 1 p.m I am doing a Facebook Live showing you something extra special, something we are launching at Stamps By Me we've never done before. I am super excited about it and I've also got an amazing announcement to tell you all about. So don't forget to check out Facebook tomorrow at 1pm. Um, whatever you're doing this evening, have a good one. If you're playing with your crafty products, have a great time and just enjoy yourself. And I'll see you all tomorrow, 1pm. Take care, everyone. Bye.